Red Raider 28 wants to know, um, he said he loves how hard the staff is recruiting Houston, um, but he wants Tech to kind of turn Houston more into a hotbed, and he wants to know how important that is to, or how important we think that is as far as Tech really going to the well in the Houston area like it does uh, DFW. Um, well, when you look at 2014, um, they signed Dakota Allen out of Summer Creek, Houston Summer Creek, and they uh, signed Demarcus Felton, the running back, out of uh, Spring to Caney. Um, now, that's just two. So, obviously, that's not as much as they got from the DFW area. But those are two recruits, especially with Dakota Allen, that they had to f- fend off TCU and Oklahoma and some schools like that. Um, and then if you look this year, um, three of their prospects, obviously Jonathan Giles, the, re- the quarterback who's going to play receiver at Tech, um, you know, he's from Fort Bend Elkins. That's the Houston area. And then uh, this is getting a, this is a big time stretch. But Devonta Hinton from Texas City is kind of down there in that area. Oh, yeah, sure. And then Corey Dauphine, which you can argue how solid of a commitment he is, and how close Port Arthur is. But it's at least kind of in that general area as far as oh, south. <laughs> I'm stretching. I know I was stretching with PA. I'm stretching with PA. But I'm saying they're definitely they're targeting uh, Houston. I mean they're fully aware of Houston. Um, and they're going after them. It's just a matter of actually making it happen. Um, they had Joshua Jones, a um, uh, guy from Richmond uh, Bush, George Bush, uh, offense, three-star offensive lineman in earlier this week. So, yeah, they're fully aware, and they're working it. Um, and I would expect to see more and more recruits come from the Houston area. All right, this is for you, Joe. Another question from Z Tanner. Uh, pick three players from Tech's projected starting offensive too deep and move them to defense. Uh, detail their role and position, and then flip it. And don't use Kenny Williams, who, honestly, I wouldn't use Kenny Williams on defense anyways. <laughs> so who do, you, who do you have there, Joe? Uh, yeah, well, I did my best. Um, <laughs> I think uh, Poet Thomas uh, goes from offensive tackle to defensive tackle. Yeah. Uh, the guy played defensive line in high school. He's a big 6'5", 335. Uh, you'd love to have somebody like that on the defensive line, maybe. And, you know, you got Shaq Davis and Dominique Robinson coming in at offensive tackle. They solidify that position. Yeah. And then, hey, maybe you don't necessarily have to have a red shirt, red shirt freshman at left tackle. Poet Thomas, defensive line, makes a certain amount of sense. Um, and then after that, it becomes really difficult. I can only come up with really one other guy that I would seriously want to move or even think about it, really. Uh, Devin Lauderdale, possibly to cornerback. Just because I like the way the way he moves on the field, yeah. he's very very quick, um, a compact 5'11", 175, really good size for a cornerback, good speed, um, you know, and with hands, hey, maybe he returns a few pick sixes. Uh, so, you know, that's that's the best I could do. Uh, defense, man, Kenny Williams. That knocked the bottom out of me because I, th- <laughs> I thought I was being really clever. Yeah, I'm going to move Kenny, Kenny Williams to running back, and then I see this little codicil in the fine print down here. Can't use Kenny Williams. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Tanner. Um, instead, okay, no Kenny Williams. Uh, D. Paul, uh, cornerback. He was uh, a very uh, effective uh, quarterback in high school. Yeah. Um, so move him to quarterback as uh, Davis Webb's backup and also maybe have him as a sort of a slash type of a player who – you split out and uh, you know throw him the ball, and then what do you know? Maybe he's going to throw the ball too. Uh, yeah. So deep, deep ball. And the other one was uh, Keenan Ward from safety uh, to running back. Uh, he's perfect Texas Tech size for a running back. Yeah. Five nine, one ninety, one ninety five. Yeah. I mean that's just a classic Tech running back size. Uh, and that guy as a senior in a high, in a high school, he ran for eighteen hundred yards and twenty three touchdowns wow. as a dual threat quarterback. Wow. So hey, you know, give him a shot. And those that's that's what I've got. I'll just throw one in there. Uh, I think Bradley Marquez would, would make a pretty good safety. I think he has the body type. Yeah. I'm he he blocks like he doesn't have a problem sure. with hitting. Sure. So I could see Marquez. I think Marquez is the kind of guy that as long as he's big enough for that position, you could kind of move him around. Obviously, he was a four-star running back coming out of high school yeah. out of Odessa. So I mean, I could see Marquez switching sides yeah. if if they need him to. Uh, TT Scott twenty two. Wants to know, uh, he said it's still early, but and really it's not with tight ends, but uh, he wants to know why we think that Tech hasn't been able to land a top flight tight end in recruiting with, you know, obviously with all the success that Jason Morrow had last year. Um, 
and he had some specific, uh, or at least one specific guy. Um, I'll, I'll just go over the 2015 class. The guys, they, Tech has offered three guys. Um, Chris Clark, who committed to Michigan today after originally committing to North Carolina and decommitting. Um, he has tweeted about Tech a couple times. Like he's, He mentioned that Tech was killing it in recruiting when Fajoko committed. But he never really considered Tech. I mean, he never, he never visited. He visited like 20 schools, but he never visited Tech. Um, Jordan Davis, out of, he's out of the Houston area, Clear Lake. He committed to A&M. Um, he, he said he liked Tech, but he, he saw it with A&M. So uh, that's, not, that's not happening. Uh, Josh Moore is a guy from Kansas, athletic guy. Um, I've interviewed him a couple times, talked to him, and Tech cooled on him. And I'm not for sure why they cooled on him. So he's out of the picture. And he said even if uh, Tech decided they wanted to go after him again, that he wouldn't consider them. Uh, but from what I hear, they don't. They're not going. They're not. They're not going to reconsider. Um, there's a guy uh, definitely worth look or keeping your eye on, and uh, he's Ennis wide receiver. He's six five. He's only two hundred pounds, so obviously he'd have to put on some weight, I guess. But he has the height uh, as far as to be a you know that play that position. Um, his name is Donta Thompson. Uh, like I said, from Ennis. Uh, I, I know that Tech's expressed interest. They haven't offered him yet, but he's definitely a guy that I think you will see Tech offer at some point and uh, could end up in red and black and gray. Um, yeah. T.T. Scott, uh, 22, also want to know about 2006 tight end Caden Smith uh, from, was it Flower Mound, I believe, or Flower Mound Marcus. Uh, he, as far as I know, he's not very interested in Tech. Um, uh, he's visited UT twice. Um, he had play, has plans to go to Stanford and Bama this summer to go visit. So I haven't heard anything from him about as far as visiting Texas Tech. So I would say as of right now, uh, no. But things could change. All right. And the final question from Rawls. Again, another food question. I'll save this one for last. Uh, a restaurant that you wish that you could eat at, but because they're either closed or is too far away, uh, that you can't eat at on a regular basis, and what would your meal be? Well, I mean, I've been in Lubbock a long time. Don't say how long, uh, by the way. Thank you very much. But uh, a lot of great restaurants that I remember from way on back that have disappeared into the sands of time. Um, certain favorites, though, are um, Golden China, which was a really killer Chinese restaurant over on about 50th and Q. And Lubbock doesn't really have a yeah. killer China Chinese restaurant right now. Yeah. Uh, another Mexican, a Mexican place called La Cumbre, which was over where Mana is now, over in Cactus Alley. Man, the best green sauce you've ever had in your life, and bean soup of all things. It was really, really good. Uh, uh, a burger joint, just a little burger shack over on about 36th and Q called Husky Burger, uh, which I, just the best burgers I ever had in my life. Wow. But uh, if one place that I'd really want to come back and I could go to is another Mexican place called El Sombrero, which was over on about 50th and what's now I-27, velvet paintings all over the place. Huh. Uh, just the old school, traditional Tex-Mex restaurant. It probably went out of business in about 75 or 76. Wow. But, yeah. Before I was born. Yeah. Just want to point that out. <laughs> probably before Rawls Landman was born. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, if I could, and you know, as far as what I would have there with me, uh, a Mexican place has always got to have enchiladas. If it can't, yeah. doesn't have enchiladas, then it's not on my list. So beef, chicken, and cheese enchiladas, a couple of tacos, and a cold margarita on the rocks. Yeah, and for me, there's only one place, and this, this was easy. Uh, I lived in South Padre Island for six years. Uh, oh, back when, Yeah, back when I was uh, in better shape and younger and all that. And uh, there was a place that was there for decades. Uh, my family used to always visit South Padre, too, when I was little uh, every summer, uh, called Jesse's Cantina. Great Mexican food restaurant. And it was great for two reasons. It had the best queso that you anybody's ever had, and it had – the best margaritas. Margaritas on the rocks. I'm not even a margaritas guy. Is it dinner time But yet? I know. <laughs> it had the best margaritas. My parents would literally, they would stop there at Jesse's Cantina to eat there uh, before we checked into the hotel. And then when I lived there, I you know, became great friends with, of course, everybody there. And they would even make my margaritas stronger and throw one or two in for free. Uh, and so I loved it. Uh, and every time I would go back since I, I left there, uh, of course, went to Jesse's. But I heard from a buddy 
who called me panic stricken when he took his family down there a couple of years ago on vacation that sadly it had closed. So I can never go back to Jesse's Cantina. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you got his number, maybe. You could yeah, actually, recipe. I do. I'm actually really good friends with him, and he will not give me the rest. Anyone, the recipe. Uh, you have to buy it, and I, I don't know. I don't. It's <laughs> a little too expensive for, uh, for, for that. But anyways, uh, gr another great week uh, of questions. That's going to do it for this week, and we look forward to uh, another edition next week.